Hey, what's up everybody? In today's video, I want to talk to you about grief and mourning, something that is profoundly personal and private, yet all of us collectively as human beings will experience it at some point. Whether it's the death of a loved one, a pet, end of a marriage, a relationship, a job or career, loss of freedom, the death of someone in your community, or other event that just changes life as we know it. I'm Risa Morimoto, your host, and you're watching Modern Aging, where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to elevate our health and well-being as we age. I want you to feel free to click on that little red button below that says subscribe on it with that little bell next to it and get notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. Yes, this video is about loss, grief, and mourning, but it is also about resilience of the human spirit. For those of you who follow this channel, you probably know that I've had a lot of loss this year. My mother, she passed away eight months ago from a uterine tumor after battling Parkinson's and a stroke for almost 20 years. And my dog, Eddie, was suddenly hit by a car the day after my mom passed. Then 2020 arrived with a vengeance. The COVID-19 pandemic put an end to my job of seven years where I was directing episodes of House Hunters International. I was traveling to different parts of the world every single month. And then my father died suddenly in April from COVID-19. And now millions are mourning the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and the hundreds of other black people who have died senselessly at the hands of the police. I don't share this to sound depressing or for anyone to feel bad for me. I share this so that we can discuss these moments openly without judgment and perhaps help one another in the healing process. Feelings of grief and mourning means that you have people, creatures that you love and care about so, so deeply, and that's such a gift. First off, everyone grieves differently. There is no right way or wrong way. There is no being super strong or being too soft. We all experience our emotions in different ways. Sometimes I'm completely fine and doing my work and then other times I'll literally break down crying uncontrollably. For me, there is no getting over it. There is no moving on. I live in a different existence now and that is fine too. There are major life events that happen over the course of time. We have our first love, our first breakup, a marriage, having kids, getting divorced, someone you love dies. These times shape us and alter our lives as we know it. As we get older, we have more life experiences. Thus, we tend to experience more grief. And, but somehow, the end of something forces us to reflect and confront. And that can be quite cathartic and eye-opening. When we do experience loss and mourning, there are stages of grief that many of us go through. And knowing and understanding these stages perhaps will bring you some solace that it is absolutely normal and a part of the process. So it's popularly known as the five stages of grief. I'm going to show, share seven stages because I think it could be a little bit more complex. These periods help explain the complicated emotions that many of us encounter. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order. I mean, sometimes you go through multiple stages at the same time or you skip a stage. There are no real rules except to know and have confidence that you will be standing when you come out on the other side. So stage one, shock and denial. It is a state of disbelief and numbness. You feel like you can't do anything, you can't feel anything, think about anything. As we were all preparing for my mom's funeral at her house, my dog Eddie got out and nobody knew. Uh, I got a phone call from an animal hospital letting me know that someone found Eddie on the side of the road and brought him in. He was still alive, but had broken numerous bones and had internal organ damage. I felt uncontrollable panic and utter numbness for days. And to be honest, I think this is something that I'm still dealing with in many ways. Stage two, pain and guilt. The loss feels unbearable. You may feel guilty because of unresolved issues or that you could have done something more or feel pain and guilt because you don't have control over the situation. I felt a lot of guilt as we put my father in a nursing home in 2016 after promising myself that I would never do that. But at the time, it was our only safe choice. And then when he died in the nursing home, I kept thinking of all the what ifs. But eventually, I was able to accept that we did the best that we could. Stage three, anger and bargaining. The loss creates feelings of anger and you lash out. Some try to bargain with God or a higher power in order to get relief from your feelings in the situation. I had a tremendous amount of anger and tried to do a lot of bargaining when my mom initially had her stroke and then was diagnosed with Parkinson's. 
but when my mother wasn't angry or resentful about being sick, and she felt that she had a higher purpose, I knew that I had to let it go of my own anger. Stage four, depression. This period, you may feel like you want to be alone, or you feel isolated and lonely. You may experience sudden crying and need the time to reflect on the loss. I'm lucky that I don't suffer from chronic depression, but there have been times over the last year that I have suddenly found myself crying uncontrollably, needing to be alone, unable to think clearly. I realized that the more I suppress those emotions, the worse it got for me. So I just allow myself the room to be fully present in the sadness and know that I always won't feel this way, but that it is okay to feel this way right now. Stage five, the upward turn. A calmness and relaxed state is upon you now. The anger and acute pain has passed. You start to see the light again. I think of my parents and dog every single day. And oddly, I didn't actually think about them every day when they were alive. But now, in the calmness and quietness, I really feel their presence and I find it extremely comforting. I look at their pictures and don't feel pain anymore, but rather a sense of peace. Stage six, reconstruction. You start to resume life. You feel like your old self again. After my sister got divorced, I don't think she thought she would ever be happy again. But as time passed, I noticed her talking less and less about the divorce and more about things that she was looking forward to doing. It took a lot of deep reflection and talking it out and self-realization for her to reach this point, but she did. She learned so much about herself, which is amazing. Stage seven, acceptance and hope. You begin to accept your new reality. You see the possibilities in the future and you can forge forward. No matter how dark things got, my mother always, always lived with hope. She instilled that within us. So even at her deathbed, it was a beautiful moment where we accepted that life would just now be different and hope would remain. There's always a lot of work still to be done and life to be lived. She is the inspiration for modern aging, for even existing. So through these videos, I'm able to share my experience and learnings to pass them along to you so that we may all live fully for as long as we're here on this planet. It's important to note that you may experience all of these stages or none of them at all some simultaneously perhaps. For me, I feel like I've been experiencing all these stages at once. Some days I'm super optimistic and I'm diving into my work and feeling full of purpose, knowing that this is how my parents live their lives. And then other days I feel completely immobile and just want to crawl up in a fetal position. And either way, it's all okay. And that's what I want you to know, that it's all okay. And it's okay that if you know somebody who's had a death recently or something bad happened to them, that you can send them a text saying, I'm thinking of you. We, don't, we, don't, we avoid the whole conversation, afraid of the awkwardness or knowing, not, not knowing what to say. But you know, there's just not much to say, but you can let them know that they're loved and supported no matter how much time has passed. As we all know, life does not come nicely packaged with a bow on top. If you think you need help, from a therapist or a friend, seek it out. There is no shame, there is no judgment. It's important for us to process and seek help when we feel like we need it. Remember, there is great abundance and opportunity that can come from tragedy and sadness, if we choose to see it. Yes, so many of us are mourning right now, but know that this too shall pass. We will stand up again, we will laugh again, we'll hug each other once again. We are resilient. Stay safe, stay healthy, everyone. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Modern Aging.